everyone, it's Haley, and today is Bookmas Day 30, so I'm going to be talking about every single book that I have pre-ordered for next year. So I know a couple of things going into this video. One, it's probably going to be long and I'm sorry. And two, it's going to really suck to edit. But also, if you missed it, yesterday for Bookmas Day 29, I don't even remember what I did. I shared my most anticipated releases for 2021. So all of the ones that I'm looking forward to the most. However, that will be linked down below as well as the Bookmas playlist if you guys need to get caught up. But that's not all of the books that I am hoping to read next year. That just like scratches the surface because let me tell you next year is shaping up to be a massive year for new releases and they all sound so amazing so I have pre-ordered like over 50 books that I have to share with you guys today now before I actually get into the books which I will just be giving you a short synopsis for if you just want to skip to them I'll have a timestamp down below but the reason that I pre-order so many is one it helps out the authors to pre-order but like also don't feel bad if you can't pre-order it's totally fine to just like buy a book or get it from the library when it comes out but it does help out if you are able to do that so since I am I like to do that now the other reason is I will do a mass pre-order like once a year or twice a year basically whenever I have a coupon I do a pre-order because what happens is and this like I don't know if this is true of every bookstore and I'm hoping that by saying this this won't go away because it does really help me to save money on books so I'll have a coupon and I pre-order all the books that I'm interested in but the money for those books doesn't come out until the book actually releases so I'm not paying like the total for this order was a thousand dollars and I'm not paying that all at once it's just as the books come out that money will come out so it's my way of kind of like saving some money throughout the year rather than having to buy books at full price it does really help out especially with the amount of books that I buy so if you guys were interested in the new year I might do a video about kind of like tips and tricks to save money on books because I know that they can be expensive but that's probably my number one tip there if you are able to pre-order books and have it so like if wherever you pre-order them from it doesn't charge your credit card until they actually come out then try doing that it definitely helps me out. I say that I do it once or twice a year because like sometimes some books are announced in the middle of the year so those ones I kind of wait until I have a coupon for. Basically I kind of try to never pay full price for a book because you know I gotta save a book. So like I said tons of books to share with you guys today so I'm just going to dive right into it. These aren't even all the books that I plan to read next year honestly or plan to pick up because it's really just the books that have been announced so far. I know for sure that there's going to be more coming. Like before I got the chance to pre-order it, Erin A. Craig had a book that was announced and I didn't realize it was available for pre-order, which is so tragic. So I also have like a little going wish list of books that I hope to pre-order when I do have a coupon. So I can keep track of all of that. You also can actually like pre-order when a paperback is coming out. So for certain books, I know I'm not gonna read them really right away. So I'll wait for the paperback to come out, but I will pre-order the paperback paperback so I will still get a discount. I just I love to get me a deal so yeah that's my little pro tip for you guys. Actually it was really bad when I was working at the bookstore because now generally I'll get like 30 to 35 percent off of the books just because that's how like the coupons go but when I was working at the bookstore once a year actually twice a year we would get 40 percent off so I would do all my pre-orders at once and get 40 percent off of all of them which was really nice. Now it's only like 30 to 35 but that's still really great. It's just like I'm kind of hanging on to my employee discount. But anyways, we have so many books to talk about today. So I'm going to be quick, snappy, speedy, and give you like a one sentence sort of like New York Times bestseller list uh, synopsis for it because they'll put like a quick line and that's it. And that's gonna be that because there are so many books. So let's just get into it. First is of course, Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. This is the latest book by the author of The Hate You Give and it actually follows Maverick who is the dad in The Hate You Give. But you follow him when he's young and he finds out that he's a dad and has to do whatever he can to try and provide for his family. Next I pre-ordered Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo. Of course I had to pre-order this one but this is the conclusion to the King of Scars duology which is focused on Nikolai. Nikolai, I can never remember how to say it. I think it's Ni Nikolai. I don't know. It always sounds different but super looking forward to this one. Next is The Blackbird Girls by Anne Blinkman. This is the latest from the author of Prisoner of Night and Fog which I have talked about quite a bit 
it, but it is a story about two different girls. One is living at the time of Chernobyl and is fleeing from that, and the other is fleeing from the Germans who are invading during World War II. So interested to see how their stories are going to intersect. Next is Lore by Alexandra Bracken. This is a world where every seven years the gods are punished and they have to come and live on Earth as mortals, and then when they do come, they're hunted. So that seems like an interesting concept. Next is The Project by Courtney Summers. This is a story where it's like, I'm kind of confused by it to be honest, but it seems like a culty sort of thing. So there's this unity project that the main character's sister joins, but the sister, not the sister, the main character is trying to expose it for what it actually is, which is not the charitable organization that it seems. Next is Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bouley. This is a thriller story about a native teen who must root out corruption in her own community. The cover for this is so beautiful and I am all here for the native representation. Tales from the Hinterland by Melissa Alba. This is the book that you know from the Hazelwood, like it's the book of fairy tales that her grandmother wrote that sets off the whole course of the story of the Hazelwood, but it's the actual stories there, so it's like a fairy tale book. Next is Cast in Firelight by Dana Swift. This is about two royal heirs who are betrothed to be married and their loyalties are being torn and there is a greater evil that is threatening their world. Next is Happily Ever Afters by Elise Bryant. This is about a girl who loves writing romance stories because she has never seen herself represented in them, so she writes her own, but she only shares them with her best friend. Now when she gets into a prestigious art school's creative writing program, she suddenly finds herself unable to write anything. So they set up a plan for her to be able to finally write romance again. Next is A Faux Love Story by Lone Lee. This is about two Vietnamese American teens who must try and navigate love while they are falling in love, but their families have an age-old feud at their competing and neighboring restaurants. Next is Pumpkin by Julie. Murphy. So this is the latest from the Dumplin' universe, but we are following an out, fat, and gay teen who is living in the small town where he can't really be his full self, so he's just waiting to be able to have the opportunity to fully be who he wants to be. Next is One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. This is the latest by the author of Red, White, and Royal Blue, and it is a sapphic romance this time that follows a girl who discovers that her subway crush is actually stuck here. She's time traveled from the 1970s, so don't know how that's gonna work out. Next is My Contrary Mary by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. This is the latest in the new series, actually, the Mary series, from the authors of My Lady Jane, and this one is also in the universe of My Lady Jane. So you follow Mary Queen of Scots and Francis, and she's in France, and she also, she turns into a mouse every now and again, so that seems awfully inconvenient. Next is Wings of Ebony by J.L. This is about a black teen from Houston who has her world completely turned upside down when she discovers that she is from godly ancestry. So she ends up having to unearth her true identity in order to save both of her worlds. Next is A Chorus Rises by Bethany C. Morrow. This is the latest book from the universe of A Song Below Water, which I read this past year, but this time we are following the YouTuber from the first book who revealed herself to be a siren and that was like all over the news, this huge scandal. So now we are getting her firsthand account of everything. Next is A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Maas. This is of course the fourth book in the Akotar series. I wasn't sure if I was going to say A Court of Thorns and Roses, so I kind of said that funny, but we are following Nesta once again. Pretty sure we followed her in the last book. I really need to refresh myself. Next is Lost in the Neverwoods by Aidan Thomas. This is by the author of Cemetery Boys, and it's kind of a Peter Pan-esque story. So there are these boys ha that have gone missing, the main character Wendy's brothers, and now other children have started going missing and she ends up running into Peter who warns her that if nothing is done then they are going to meet the same fate as her brothers. Next is People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. This is the second adult romance novel by Emily Henry and this time we are following a travel writer who is in love with her best friend and she has one week to win him back so she sets up this whole trip for them to go on. Sounds so good. Next is What's Not to Love by Emily Wibberly and Austin Sigmund Broca. This is an enemy 
Enemies to Lovers Academic Story. It has the cutest cover, let me tell you. I love this cover. Next is If the Shoe Fits by Julie Murphy. This is Julie Murphy, who I was just talking about earlier for Pumpkin. This is her newest adult novel. It's her first adult romance novel, which is super exciting, but you follow a girl who ends up finding herself as the lone plus size contestant on a reality dating show. Next is With You All the Way by Cynthia Hand. So this is about a main character whose world has kind of been falling apart and a lot of it has to do with like other people having affairs and cheating. Her boyfriend cheated on her but her sister has been telling her to like prize her virginity and protect it but then she just decides nope anymore and that's the story. Next is Game Changer by Neil Shusterman. So this is the latest by the author of Unwind and Scythe and it is about a boy who is playing in a football game and he ends up getting hit and that hit ends up sending him to an entirely different dimension. So he's going to all these different dimensions that are kind of like his world but not quite exactly. Next is Blade of Secrets by Trisha Levenseller. This is about a teen blacksmith with social anxiety who ends up accepting a commission from the wrong person and now she is forced to go on the run with the most powerful sword that she has ever made that is going to put the world in grave danger. Next is Isn't It Bromantic by Lisa K. Adams. This is the latest for the Bromance Book Club series and now we are getting the Russian Vlad his love story. He was married out of a marriage of convenience to an old childhood friend and he turns to the book club to try and rekindle their lost or never really was romance. Next is The Ones We Were Meant to Find by Joan He. This is a mysterious sci-fi story about the main character who ends up waking up on this island and she has no memories except for the fact that she has a sister. Next is Luck of the Titanic by Stacey Lee. This is a historical fiction that follows twin Chinese-British acrobats who are going aboard the Titanic on its ill-fated mated voyage. Next is Take Me Home Tonight by Morgan Matson. So I would actually assume that this book is actually happening since I have it pre-ordered. I was able to do that because I feel like for a while she would have books announced, they would have no covers, and then it took like years for them to come out. But I have hopes for this one, but it follows best friends who don't really have a lot in common, but they are still best friends and they end up going for this adventurous night in New York. They plan the whole thing, but what they don't plan is basically everything that ends up happening. They lose their phones, their money, and each other. So that's inconvenient. Next is Witches Steeped in Gold by Sienan Smart. This is a Nigerian inspired fantasy and you follow two witches who are sworn enemies who are forced to come together in an alliance against a mutual evil. Next is You Have a Match by Emma Lord. This is by the author of Tweet Q. This is her latest novel but the main character signs up for a DNA service which she's hoping to use it as a nudge for her crush and I'm not exactly sure how that would do it, but I don't know. There must be something that I'm missing from the synopsis there, but she ends up actually uncovering that she is a younger sister. Next is Sisters of the Snake by Sasha Nanua. This is about a lost princess, a dark puppet master, and a race against time, and you follow this princess and a street urchin as their worlds collide. Next is Excuse Me While I Ugly Cry by Joya Goffney. This is about an overly enthusiastic list maker. She makes lists for pretty much everything, but now she's being blackmailed into completing a list of her worst fears or else her journal, which has been stolen, will be revealed to everyone. Next is Last Chance Books by Kelsey Rodkey. This is about a girl in a family-owned bookstore who just has dreams to take over that bookstore one day. It's all she wants to do, but then those dreams are threatened when a new big box bookstore opens down the road and suddenly they have competition and of course there's someone working for the competitor who she starts to get to know. Next is XOXO by Axie O and this is is a story about a cello prodigy who goes to South Korea to go to this prestigious music school and she ends up meeting this guy there who also goes to the school and he actually turns out to be a k-pop band member. Next is Love and Other Natural Disasters by Misa Sugera. So I've read Love and what was it? What was? No, it's not Love. This time will be different. That's the other book that I've read by this author. But this follows the main character who meets the perfect girl and she's really excited about it. When that girl asks her to pretend to be her girlfriend to make her ex jealous. So she has a plan though, it's not going to be fake, she's going to turn it into a real romance, which sounds great. Next is Jay's Gay Agenda by Jason June. So Jay hears all of his friends talking about all of their romantic times, like the fun that they are having in high school, but he is in a small town and he's not able to experience things like they are. So he makes a gay agenda of the list of 
things that he wants to do when he's finally living somewhere where he can be out and proud. Now his family actually ends up moving somewhere where there is a thriving LGBTQ plus community at his school and he's finally able to live the life he's always wanted to. Next is The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. This follows a single mother who ends up signing up for a dating service unexpectedly because it's actually based in DNA and numbers so she feels like it makes sense but she ends up getting a 98% match with the owner and founder of the dating service. Next is After Your Age by Talia Hibbert. This is the final book of the Brown Sisters trilogy but this one obviously follows Eve. So she is the flightiest of the Brown Sisters and she ends up falling for a B&B &B owner who is way more uptight than she is. Next is The Dating Plan by Sarah Desai. This is about fake fiancés so that's super intriguing but obviously I mean it's an adult romance. They start to actually fall for each other. Next is Second First Impressions by Sally Thorne. This is by the author of The Hating Game and 99% Mine. I really didn't like 99% Mine but this one seems like it could be fun. So this is about a muscular tattooed dude who ends up getting hired as the assistant for two old ladies and he has to operate under the watchful eye of the retirement home manager who is very beautiful and you know is gonna be throwing a little wrench in his plans. Next is Dial A for Aunties by Jesse Q. Sutanto. This is a murder mystery, rom-com, celebration of the Chinese and Indonesian culture, and a celebration of daughters and mothers and aunties and all of that. Next is Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. This is about a young girl whose life falls apart when she meets her wife. So I don't know how that's gonna go, but it doesn't sound great. Next is Twice Shy by Sarah Hogel. This is an unconventional rom-com about a girl who ends up inheriting this sprawling estate, which she wasn't expecting, and meets the stoic groundskeeper. Who? Next is Fat Chance Charlie Vega. This is about the main character, Charlie Vega, who is a fat brown girl who it's a coming of age story about her trying to grow up in a white suburban Connecticut neighborhood. It's suburban, not suburban. I don't know why I said suburban. I wasn't sure if I wanted to say suburbia or suburban. We struggle. Next is The Infinity Courts by Akemi Dawn Bowman. This is a sci-fi story about a girl who is murdered before her life can ever really begin and she ends up finding herself in this kind of in-between place where your soul goes once your physical body has actually died. Next is Hot British Boyfriend by Christy Boyce. So this is about a girl who she breaks up with her boyfriend or he breaks up with her actually but it was a very public rejection so she ends up doing the only sensible thing in fleeing the country by going with her school on a study abroad trip and trying to find the perfect British boyfriend. Next is Roman and Jewel by Dana L. Davis. This is about what if Romeo and Juliet got the Hamilton treatment and then you follow the two lead actors. Next is One of the Good Ones by Micah Mouly and Maritza Mouly. This is about sisters who are mourning the loss of their social activist sister who died under mysterious circumstances and they decide to take off on a trip in her honor. Next is The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. This is about a world where your blood decides if you're allowed to stay in the community so the main character has always felt othered and she's hoping in this ceremony that her blood will run red but it actually ends up being gold so she ends up getting an offer from this mysterious woman to join an army of people like her who are fighting for the king. Next is The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. So in this story we follow Quan who is just he's found himself as CEO and suddenly all these girls are very interested in him and there's this girl who has OCD so there's OCD rep but she hates him but she also has a secret crush on him and she has to try and seduce him so he won't ruin her sister's engagement. Next is Like Home by Louisa Oname. This is about a girl whose life is turned completely upside down after one act of vandalism throws her relationships and her entire neighborhood into turmoil. Next is Love is a Revolution by Renee Watson. This is about a girl who ends up getting herself in kind of a sticky situation. She unexpectedly starts falling for the MC at her friend's open mic night and she starts kind of telling some white lies to try and make it seem like they have more in common and then she finds herself struggling to remember which lies she's told and keep everything straight. Next is The Cost of Knowing by Brittany Morris. This is about a boy who whenever he touches an object or a person he's doomed to see the future and it ends up being a really bad thing because because he sees that his brother is going to die and he feels completely helpless to stop it. Next is Where the Rhythm Takes You by Sarah Doss. This is set in Tobago and it follows the main character who has lived on her family's seaside resort forever and
and everyone keeps on leaving though and her childhood best friend has left and he ends up actually returning but as a VIP guest at the resort. Next is Mr. Impossible by Maggie Stiefvater. This is the sequel to, Stra no not Strange the Dreamer, what is it called? It's the Dreamer trilogy, it's the second book of that. Call Down the Hawk is the first book, I still need to read it but I was like I will eventually so I did pre-order this. Next is Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. This is about a princess who has forbidden magic in her veins and she keeps it under control but on the day that she is set to be married she ends up accidentally but also it's kind of a blessing unleashing it at her betrothed. Now then she is cursed to her brothers have all been taken away and if she says anything about what has happened to them they've been turned into cranes actually that's it but if she says anything about it one of them will die for each word that she says about it. And finally oh my goodness is The Right Side of Reckless by Whitney D. Grandison. This is about two characters one always follows the rules the other doesn't and how they meet and what is going to happen with that. Okay so I warned you I pre-ordered a lot of books. Now I know you're probably like you're never gonna read all of these and honestly I probably won't read them all this year but they are all ones that I'm really excited to have to add to my collection. I love having a big amount of books to choose from and I do have a lot already but I just I want to try and support authors as much as I possibly can especially with everything that has been happening in the world I am hoping to help out as much as I possibly am able to. So I'm so excited for all of these titles. Lots of debuts here actually which is really exciting but please do let me know if you have pre-ordered any books which ones you are the most excited for or if you haven't pre-ordered any either way whichever book you are the most excited for if any are on your list that were on mine as well. But tomorrow is the final day of Bookmas. Oh my goodness I can't believe we're finally here. Wow. But tomorrow I'm going to be talking about my reading resolutions for the next year as well as the specific books that are on my TBR for 2021. So don't want to miss that and you can click that subscribe button so you for sure won't and you can also click that bell icon so you'll be notified whenever I post. Even after Bookmas I will be posting a new video every two like two to three days a week not every two days. Wow that would be a lot. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I will see you tomorrow in the next one. Bye! Thank you.